All right, so I guess the first thing I'm going to start off with is, um, as you can see here, I did switch out my uh, my oil return line. This is now a 10 an uh, adapter fitting, so you can go ahead and, and put in a 10 an fitting right here, and then you can uh, route it for your oil return line. I'm going to link in the description below where you can buy this set because not that many people have them or not many uh, vendors sell it for the Genesis Coop, but it's pretty much identical to the Evil and DSM oil band ones. So that's the first thing. I guess the second thing I'm gonna do now is uh, put on the oil filter housing and then put on the adapter sandwich plate for it. Gasket's on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the oil, I'm gonna put the oil filter housing on now. And it's held on by these uh, 12 millimeter bolts right here, it's four of them. All right, this bad boy's on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the sandwich plate and put it on. All right guys, so uh, what I have right here is a Mission Moto oil sandwich plate. Uh, this is specifically for the Genesis Coupe. It has uh, the threading for it and everything. Anyways, so I've had a lot of people ask me where's the best place to put your oil pressure sensor at. And majority of the time, people just go ahead and put it on here, which I mean, I haven't had a problem at all really but from what i know and what gives off the best and more accurate readings is if you were to drill in a hole into this part right here of your oil filter housing this would be the more accurate location of where to put your oil pressure sensor at but since i have a sandwich plate ready and i don't feel like doing all that stuff and i, I really don't think it's necessary for me so i'm just going to go ahead and use this as my oil pressure sensor it's on the sandwich plate and then this guy right here is what i use for my oil feed and as you can see right here i have this guy shut uh this is where the old oil feed used to be at where i plan on putting my oil temp sensor is right here so just to guys give you an idea of of uh oil temp oil temp sensor locations and oil pressure sensor locations it's a uh, sandwich plate or right here on the oil filter housing. All right guys, so whenever you get an oil filter sandwich plate, um, you usually end up with your adapter, right? That goes to your oil filter, your original oil filter. And then it's gonna give you uh, three of these Allens, uh, I guess like lock bolts or I don't know what to call them, but it gives you three of them. Um, that way you can plug them up if you're not using them. And then you're gonna come with a gasket too. This gasket goes on top of the oil filter or the oil sandwich plate to make sure it's sealed correctly, just like that. So this face is gonna go up just like this and it stays snug like that. If you just tw twist this guy down there, get it in the position you'd like, turn it, lock it in place, and then you're gonna get like, I, I can't remember the size for it. I'm gonna go check right now. Okay, so the socket size was a size 26 for that bolt. All right, so we got the oil, uh, we got the oil, pl uh, we got the oil filter housing installed. We got the oil uh, sandwich plate put in, the return and fitting adapter plate. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna put on is uh, this dude right here. Uh, this is the back part of the engine where you get coolant from your radiator. So you have your radiator hose go from, the, from that side over here and it travels back this way into this bar right here and it feeds coolant to the back of your box. And also back here, you have your coolant uh, temperature sensor right there. So easy all to do is put these two on. Okay. And then they're held in by two nuts and two bolts and they're 12 millimeters. A nut right here, a nut down here, and you got a bolt right here and a bolt right there. Put the bolt in next. All right, that's installed. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to put on the turbo manifold. All right, so your your exhaust manifold for BK1, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten bolts. And the socket size, it's going to be a 14 mil, by the way. All right, so I got the exhaust manifold on. This is a CPE exhaust manifold. It is a top mount manifold, and it's also a V flange. So. If you were to get a turbo, it has to be a V-flange exhaust housing, just an FYI. Uh, a lot of you guys were questioning too, what were these right here? And these are EGTs, exhaust gas temperature. Um, 
points and I had this on here, but I got rid of it. Okay. I, I just didn't need it anymore. Uh, my wastegate is a 46 millimeter wastegate and it also has a 28 pound uh, spring in here. The reason why it's so big is because I don't use a boost controller. So I basically run off a of wastegate pressure only, which is at 28 that's a, which is a 28 pound spring, but it over boosts about five pounds. So I usually hit 33 uh, pounds of boost with this. All right, so right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and apply a gasket sealer or gasket maker, and we're gonna install the oil pan. After that, I'm gonna see if I can install the AC and the alternator. All right, so we got our gasket maker on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the oil pan, which is a brand new oil pan. Uh, because uh, my other oil pan had like flakes in it and, and to me if, it, if 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 an oil pan is contaminated never reuse it always get a new one that's just my saying so I'm, I just brought a new oil pan and now we're gonna put it on Piece right here is like a bracket or a support bracket piece it comes off it's held in by five uh, 14 millimeter bolts it's one two three four and five whenever you pull this guy out though be careful because uh that actually uh connects to one of your coolant passages so you might have a little coolant leak out so just an fyi on that so put those four uh those five bolts on and then we'll go ahead and put on the alternator and then uh, we'll put on the AC. So yeah, I would recommend using a mount to get this into place uh, in or inside the engine bay or outside like I'm doing right now. It makes it way easier or use a pry bar either, either way. Um, so you see how this guy needs to line up with this and then down here, this guy needs to line up with that, with that guy. So we're just gonna use a mallet get it in place and then once one of them is in place go ahead and get the bolt push it through still needs a little bit more see. now we're gonna work the bottom piece right here and then we're gonna push this piece in now. All right, after getting this dude in place, we get to tighten up the bolts, which is uh, another two 14 mils. One on top, one on bottom. And then your alternator is installed. All right, alternator is fully installed. Uh, last thing we're gonna be able to install is the AC. And the reason why it's last is because uh, I'm not gonna put on the intake manifold until it's inside the engine bay. Reason why is because it's easier to put all my connections while this is out of the engine bay. So uh, it's easier to hook up like my alternator, my AC, anything that's right here, it's easier to hook up. And um, you really can't put the power steering pump on because the power steering will get in the way of right here. And then the, uh, the water pump pulley will get in the way of this timing cover right here. So that's why I'm not installing those. I'm leaving those for like last. But um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and install the AC. And that will be it for uh, installing accessories part one. And then I'll do an accessories video part two whenever everything is together. And I can put the water pump on and everything else. Uh, starter's gonna go in last as well because, uh, well, if you have a BK1 starter, and if you have a BK1, you have to put your starter in here first before you put the motor mounts because if you put it in here last, it's going to be impossible to put the starter in with the motor mounts installed. If you have a BK2 starter, it will slide right in. You don't need to take out the motor mounts, which is what I have a, BK, I have a BK2 uh, starter. So not to worry about that. But if you have a BK1 starter, you have to put it in first before putting in the motor mounts. So just an FYI. All right, so this is my BK1 AC compressor. It's uh, slide in through these two slots and then those two up here. And that's gonna be installed. It's held in by uh, four 12 millimeter bolts. All right, so again, it's one, two, 
three and four. Just about throw them in hand tight real quick. Make sure they grab. All right, and just like that, AC compressor is installed, alternator, that back pipe, uh, and fitting, exhaust housing, oil filter housing, and sandwich plate. So that's gonna be it for uh, this uh, video. And uh, whenever, whenever I get my ARP washers, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about uh, installing the cams, uh, torquing on the heads, and then the timing chain. And then we'll put on the rest of the stuff, and then the engine will be complete. So, yep. Until next video, guys. See y'all later.